Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. Today is Thursday, March the 28th, 2019. It's 4 p.m. in New York. It's 1 p.m. in Los Angeles. Uh, that would make it 8 p.m. in London, Sydney, Australia. You're around 7 a.m. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And the only sad thing today on this uh, daily dose of happy is that Steve Rowell can't join us today. He's got a, another commitment he has to deal with. But as so often happens with him, on those occasions where he's not able to join us, he has sent along a special guest for me to interview. And I know about as much about him as you do. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, but I'll, I'll tell you what Steve sent to me, this is the introduction that I have. So be before becoming a motivational speaker and life coach, Andres has pursued his dream he has had since he was 12 of being a stand-up comedian. Now, stand-up comedy gave him the confidence to pursue public speaking. He now speaks at youth conferences, schools, corporations, and as a life coach, he helps his clients overcome what he describes as the five fears that are holding back many people from living their full potential. We're gonna find out what they are. Uh, he helps them believe in themselves so they can pursue their goals and dreams and find their life's purpose like he did. He's also the co-host of the podcast Power, Passion, and Coffee, along with Jermaine Miller. And you can find their podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Facebook Live. So now you know everything about Andres that I know. Let's see if we can find out some more. Andres Ruiz, thank you for joining me on LOA Today today. Thank you for having me, Wall. I really appreciate this. I'm really excited. So and thank you for the introduction. It was great. Oh, you're quite welcome. Quite welcome. Um, and uh, I see that you are contacting us because we're, we're also doing the video live stream um, onto Facebook. You're contacting us from your vehicle, which means you're out, yes. to, out about doing your stuff, which is kind of fun. Yeah. We actually have a lot of people who do that periodically. It's kind of interesting. Okay, um, cool, cool. But uh, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Now, I've given you a little bit of an introduction, but you got to tell us more of who you are because, I mean, I literally met you about uh, 15 minutes ago, and that's about how much I yes. know. So who is Andres? Tell me who Andres is. Okay. So me, I'm, uh, right now I'm currently doing uh, motivational speaking. Uh, uh, my passion is really to help out, like, our youth, uh, to help out my clients uh, with with fi finding their goals and, and dreams, like, like really truly pursuing what they want to do. Because like for, for myself, at one point in my life, I was working at a job that I hated. I was really miserable. Uh, I was uh, really depressed, uh, having daily anxiety. Um, I, was, uh, I was overweight at one point in my life. I was weighing like about 270 pounds and even more depressed because of my physique. Uh, wow. I also was doing a, a, lot of, a lot of crazy things, you know, doing, uh, hard drugs like cocaine, uh, taking pills while I was drinking alcohol. Um, so I was doing a lot of crazy stuff and really it, a lot of it had to do with the people I was around, uh, the way I was raised. I was around a lot of uh, things that many kids should not see in their, in their lifetime when, when they're little, you know? Mm, so yeah. that's just a little bit about my past and a little bit of what I'm doing right now. Uh, and now through personal development, it change my life forever to just change the person that I was in the past, like really working on my mindset, taking care of my mind through being a more positive person, uh, listening to people like Tony Robbins, Les Brown, all these great motivational speakers that changed my life forever. Fantastic. Of course, of course, you, you actually were the one who changed your life forever, but they helped. I mean, they certainly gave you some good ideas. Yeah. But, uh... Couldn't really do much unless yeah, you actually right. changed it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had to do the work. You sure did. Yeah, well, we all do. That's the way it is in life. Um, you actually kind of, in, in a way, remind me of my Thursday morning co-host, Joel Elston. Uh, Joel and I have uh, been doing the show now together for about four or five years. And uh, he also does a lot of work with young people, particularly with, most often, with young men who are stuck in the foster care system. Uh, the the so-called unadoptable ones. And uh, yeah. he has, I, I believe the current count is, he has helped find forever homes for 36 of them. He adopted three himself, and he's provided all kinds of pro bono help to uh, kids up to age 21, really, um, in countless cases, probably hundreds of cases. Uh, and he himself wow, had, he, he didn't have a drug problem. He had a gambling problem when he was young. He was... Uh, he, he worked for his father's firm, and while he was working for his father's firm, 
um, he got into the gambling and he ended up stealing and going to prison for that. And he ended up homeless on the strip in Las Vegas, eating out of dumpsters and things like that. And then he discovered wow. the law of attraction and got some other uh, assistance as well and turned his entire life around today. Like you, he's a life coach, very successful living in the Richmond, Virginia area and just, you know, completely turned that into a springboard. So I tell you all that because. I want to ask you a question um, that's very much tied to his own heart, because in his view, all of that stuff he went through was actually the best stuff he could have gone through because it gave him the springboard he needed, it gave him the push that he needed to really make the changes in his life that not only just turned his life around, but helped him to live a life that was far beyond anything he could possibly imagine at that time. So even though he did, certainly didn't like living uh, on the street or eating out of a dumpster or anything like that, he considers that some of the most fortunate things that ever happened to him. So I'm kind of curious, do you have any kind of a similar feeling about the stuff you went through? Yeah, no, I agree 100% uh, with, with what he went through and what I went through is a blessing. Now I look at, before I used to look at it like, why? On it. Oh, there you Let's are. See. We lost your voice for a second there. <laughs> oh, when, when I look back on it, it really truly is a blessing because that is what made me the man that I am today. And uh, what really changed my life was when I found out I was going to have a baby. Like uh, my, uh, my, my son uh, was, uh, you know, when I was going to find out I was going to have a baby, I said, you know, I got to take care of myself because if I don't take care of myself, who's going to take care of him? So that's sure. when I got on a diet lost about 80, 80 pounds and, uh, but then started working on my mindset to try to pursue something different because I remember one time listening to an audio by Les Brown and he said, many people will leave the universe without a trace and under their name, you can put not used up. And I said, that's me, man. I'm not being used up. I'm not, I'm not really using my, my full potential. And it's all it, like, what am I here for? I'm here to serve and to help people and that's that's what my my purpose is but getting back to what happened to me in my life i agree 100 percent. that happened to me for a reason it had to happen in order for me to to get to to help other people help young people but, uh, yeah definitely uh what i what i gone through has helped me to help other people very cool and he also waxes eloquently about the concept of struggle a lot of people get frustrated by struggle. He thinks struggle is one of the best things that there is on earth because the best growth happens when we struggle. And at first I was a little bit resistant to his concept, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized, I think he's right. Struggle is important because if you don't struggle, then you don't have fabulous victories. Yes. Yeah. If, if you don't, you got to struggle and you got to fail. Uh, the other day I was at a motivational speaking class. Uh, it's kind of motivational interviewing. It's called. It's a technique to to help you to be a better life coach. And they said that a mistakes are gifts, uh, mm. failures are gifts. It's a gift. You got to look at it as a gift because when you fail, you learn. But many people, what they do is that they fail, and that's actually one of the fears that uh, that uh, that I come across a lot is failure, fear of failure. Many people. Fear oh, yeah. of failure, and if they do fail in life, they fail once and then they give up. Some people don't even take a swing at it, but some mm. people, they take a swing and they try and then they fail and they say, you know what, this is not for me. Yeah, sure. And so, yeah, I'd that's, one of, that's one of the problem. fears. I mean, it's actually not necessarily a problem unless you give up completely. And that's where, what I think really happens. You know, they, 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 they try something, they fail, and then they give up completely. They, they, they give up on dreaming. They give up on trying anything. They just kind of throw in the towel on life and say, I'm done. And that's what the real problem is. Yes. It's actually fine to, to try one thing and fail. No, it's not really for me. Try the next thing and fail. No, that's not for me. And keep until you find the thing that, that you really love. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the part where you just try something, you give up, and I don't know what to do. So I just, I'm, I'm my life is over. That's it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. People, they think that, yeah, this, this is it. I'm not going to try it again because I don't want to get hurt. People don't want to get hurt. But right. in the process of this, you're going to get hurt. I mean, to this day, I still, it happens. You know, like I, 
sometimes I have my days where I have a little bit of anxiety creep up and I'm like, damn, like, should I still keep going, still doing this? And, and you know, I've had my doubts, my self doubts, like nobody's perfect, you know, and if you're perfect, then you're a liar. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Uh, one of our <laughs> listeners, one of our uh, live stream listeners has commented, Saira is saying, struggle is not a failure. It's a stepping stone to something bigger, which is a wonderful way to yeah. look at it. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it. I like that. That's really good. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the, the journey that you've had. You know, tell us some stories about uh, your experience since you made the jump. Because you, well, first of all, tell us a little bit about how you made the jump. Because you were working in a, a corporate job, you weren't really happy about it. Tell us about that story a little bit. So when I was working at that job that I didn't like, uh, I still remember uh, the day that I decided to quit my job was I was sitting at my desk and I was telling, I was asking myself. Like, oh, man, should I quit this job? I hate this job. Like, should I, should I just leave? What should I do? And then I said, I was listening to Eric Thomas in my ear, and he said, you must be willing to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. And then that just, that just hit me, and I said, man, I got to quit. And then I went to my uh, supervisor at the time, and I said, hey, Mary, I got to talk to you. And then she's like, are you okay? What's going on? And so we sat down, and then I said, I'm putting in my two weeks' notice. And she said, what? Really? Like, you know, but the pay's good. Like, why would you leave? And I said, <laughs> I just, I, I just got to quit. Like, it's just, it's just, uh, I got to do, I, I found something else that I want to do. And really, I didn't know kind of like what really, what I was doing, man. I was still kind of like unsure, but I was sure that I didn't want to stay there. So then I put in my two weeks notice. And then from there, I, uh, I started to do some, some coaching on my, on my own, you know, but I really, I didn't, I didn't succeed. It, I failed and I had to get back into working again, but working at jobs that I hated uh, again, just repeating that, that cycle. But then I then started working at a shelter with, uh, uh, I started working at a, at a shelter with kids who had been through a lot of things in their lives. I'm talking like, uh, like some of the worst things that you could possibly think of, you know, like kind of like your buddy, uh, Joel, did you say Joel, his name is Joel. Yeah. Joel. Mm -hmm. Joel. So, a lot of these kids, they've been through a lot, and um, they're, they're kids from, like, Guatemala and Honduras, so they were, they were, uh, they, they had been through a lot of stuff, and in that shelter, I, uh, I pretty much started to coach them and uh, mentor them and uh, give them classes, courses on, like, self-love, believing in themselves, and... I would just give them classes, and I remember one day, uh, a couple of kids, uh, I still remember their names, uh, Luis Miguel and Robelo, Robelito. <laughs> I remember these kids came up to me, and they said, hey, teacher, because they call me teacher. They don't know how to say teacher, but they say teacher. Uh, That's all right. Show us, show us some English, and then I'm like, uh, I'm doing better than good and better than most, and they're like, huh? <laughs> and uh, Betty the good, Betty the most. Uh, no, I was like, okay, I want to know something else. I'll go mass. They're like, I'll go mass. And then I'm like, okay, say I believe in myself. And then they're like, I believe in myself. Okay, that one's better. So <clears throat> from that day forth, uh, the kids, I would tell them, hey, say I believe in myself. So they would go up to me and be like, T-shirt, I believe in myself. I believe in myself. Right. I believe. And I remember one day we, we were at a, uh, we were in a room. With uh, it was about 80 kids, and some of the toughest kids, you know, they're like, I was like, hey guys, we're gonna start. Like, I was talking to them, I was like, we're gonna say some affirmations. Everybody stand up, and some of them were like, you know, like the tough ones are like, man, this is stupid. And yeah, before you know it, I was like saying, hey, everybody say, I believe in myself, and they were like, I believe in myself, I believe. Like they were yelling out really loud. Even uh -huh. the securities came like, hey, everything okay, everything okay, like you know, because they were really <laughs> rowdy. <laughs> And they're like, no, yeah, things cool, man. It's just, you know, we're, we're getting a little bit into the affirmations or whatever. But so that's where my brand came from. That That's kind of like the story behind it. Like the I believe in myself. Uh, that's where I, I, I got the, I came up with the name, like for my company, I believe in myself. Because oh, of that's that. what you call your company. Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe in myself. Um, yeah, so people are like, why? I believe in myself. Like, but I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it's just. It has a meaning, you know. It's not like if I just say, "Hey, I believe in myself." I was just, oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, that's a good name. I, I like the name. I, I like the. It takes a little bit of uh, outside the Hispanic 
culture into the, the Jewish culture, it takes a little chutzpah to yeah. call your company that, you know, but that's good. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so that's how the name came about, like uh, doing that and uh, working with foster kids. Um, and uh, and we're right now, like, I, I like, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get into maybe possibly coaching teenagers now, too. Like, Very good. getting into it. Yeah, because uh, I, I love kids, man. Um, today I actually gave a speech to my first graders uh, class. Uh, I even brought like a little stuffed animal, like uh, mm -hmm. that I that I bought. And uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, just talking to them about affirmations, uh, bullying, and uh, just self love and how much I believe in them. And I mean, it's just little first graders, but it was like a twenty minute speech because you know that I don't think they could take like an hour, hour and a half speech. They're Right, you know, the right. attention span, but but uh, it was uh, it was cool. Like the twenty minutes, they were really engaged. They were yelling at the top of their lungs. I put it on Facebook Live. Anybody can check it out if they ever want to. Like, it's really oh, good. great. It's I, I presume that your I, I, I presume that your Facebook page is called "I Believe in Myself." Yeah, I believe in myself. Yes. So that's what people have to look up in order to go find that. Okay. Yes, and then uh, I have like weekly material where I talk about like self awareness, consciousness. Um, uh, coach, like, you know, I just give tips to people and uh, little tools that they could use to improve their lives because the simplest tools can change your life. Gratitude, uh, journaling, meditation, mindfulness, these little tools that people would have never even thought of using, they can change your life, mm -hmm. like the way they changed my life. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, you change the way you think, you change the way you feel, you change your experience. And that's a good thing. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, kids in particular, I really like the topic of, because I like kids. I, I think kids are great. Yeah. Um, but I also yeah. like the topic because of two reasons. One reason is, uh, and this is something actually one of my other co-hosts pointed out to me recently. I hadn't really thought about it, but it's really true. Kids are much closer to the non-physical realm than we are because they were there more free, more, more recently than we were. The, the, the longer that we, we are alive, the more we become adults and so forth, the more acclimate i guess you could say we are to the physical world but kids they have they're, they're they're closer to the time when they were born and and so there's there's some degree of memory of that so i always find yeah. uh that that kids are an amazing source of inspiration and often insight kids have amazing insights you, i i imagine yeah. you, i can see you nodding your head yeah you see the same yeah. thing right absolutely absolutely yes um my my That's son, so he's always coming up with the funniest things, you know. Just uh, my six year old, he he just uh, he he amazes me sometimes. Just how he says that. I uh, like the other day he was uh, he was telling me. I was like, what are you thinking about? Well, what I do is um, in my brain, my mind it downloads my thought, and then I just say it to you. Like just little things like that. That <laughs> you're just like, oh, cool. That's pretty cool. Like. Uh, or like sometimes like my, my four year old, he'll be crying. The other day he was crying and he's like, my, my four year old, his name is Abram. And my, my six year old is Andres. And, uh, my six year old tells him, cause my four year old was saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then he says, Abram, if you tell yourself that you can't, that means that you can't. But if you tell yourself that you can, that means that you can. So tell yourself yeah. you can. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like they, they really listen, man. They, they pay attention to us. Oh, they, they do. That's why. You gotta watch yourself, man. I, I'm, I, I <laughs> you can't I'm get away with anything, too. <laughs> oh no, no, I say a bad word, like, "Ooh, daddy, you said yes, <laughs> I heard you." I'm like, this guy, you're like, you're right, you're, and I gotta, I gotta tell him, I gotta hold myself accountable and say, "Yeah, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I, that's a bad word. I shouldn't be saying that. You know, just, but." Uh, but yeah, Robin Earth, Williams had a yeah. Robin Williams had a terrific take on that because he he ran into the same issue, of course, with his <laughs> children, and he he recalls thinking to himself, you know, that on on one particular occasion where that happened, it was like having his father, his his dead father, over his shoulder, going, "Ha ha ha, revenge is mine." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, but I love I love kids. One of my reasons that I really love kids is that I helped to found an alternative school back in 2002, and it was based on what's known as the Sudbury model, which is a very 
a leading edge kind of school, we'll call it that. It, it's a very edgy concept because it puts the kids 100% in control of their day, which is kind of tough for adults to handle, you know, having the kids be in total control of what they're going to do all day long is that that's a little bit out there. But it's a fun model and it's, a, yeah. it's really interesting to set up a school like that. And I that's where I really came to appreciate a lot of things about kids. One of the things that I really appreciate is something that I call the built in compass. It is the ability of a kid, if you just let them do or let her do what they need to do, they will just try things, keep trying things until they find the one thing that they most need to learn at that particular time. You don't have to guide yeah. them there. You don't have to introduce them to the concepts. You don't have to expose them to stuff. You just have to let them go. And when you do, they just, yeah. it, it's, it's like an unerring instinct that guides them right to where it is they need to, to learn next. It's really something. Yeah, you've seen the same thing. Nice. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%, man. Um, with, with school, I'm really like the type of person, uh, and I, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, say anything bad against school or anything like that. But I feel like uh, there, there should be like that alternative school, but like, like an entrepreneur school. You know, like I, <laughs> I, I see that. You know what I mean? Just like in my mind, I feel that these kids, if we tell them that they can do it, and really, really instill in their brains that they can accomplish whatever they want. They will accomplish it, and because throughout, uh, actually, there's this great story by Les Brown. He talks about how there's two boys, they're they're playing on on thin ice, and then the ice breaks, and one of the boys goes under, mm. and after that, his his buddy, his other buddy, he was there like he's like an eight year old. He grabs a branch and then starts hitting the the ice and starts doing like a circular motion and. Some way, somehow, he breaks through the ice and saves wow. his buddy. And then when the paramedics get there, the paramedics are like, they're like in awe. They're like, how did this little guy with that little branch break through this ice? And then there was an old man, like a, a white-haired man, older, and he says, you know why he did it? And they're like, why? Because nobody told him that he couldn't. <laughs> oh, I love that. I, I love, love that. that too, man. It's beautiful That's because terrible. how many times are we told that we can't do something? Right. I mean, I think like by the time we're 18, I think we're told like, I don't know how many thousands of times the word no. Oh, no. it's crazy. No. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, no, it just reminded me of that story. Good story. I love it. Um, Saira has a, a, a kind of a comment question thing for us. Let me see if I got it straight okay. here. I'm doing a little copy and pasting because it gets a little bit tough at times to read off of Facebook. I don't know if you ever knows that, but Facebook has type that is too small. That's just all there is to it. Their type yeah. is too yeah. small. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for those of us with aging eyes, it just doesn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, Saira wanted to say it to you, my kids said the same uh, thing to each other. The daughter told the four-year-old, you can do it and you will, and wanted to share that comment with you. Beautiful, beautiful, excellent. You're teaching them yeah. right. You're yeah, doing amazing. Exactly. And then uh, Nasha kind of asked a question. It was a question comment. She says, "I mean, is there a way to shift one's thought and love ourselves, which is really what you're trying to teach them?" So, I mean, yes. Address, address that for Nasha for a second. So, for me, uh, when I when I truly started loving myself was when I first the first step that I took was I I created my values. What values do I, I want to live by, not what everybody else wants to live by? So when I wrote down my values, the man that I wanted to be, I read those values. To this day, I read them every week to make sure that I stay in alignment with what I want in my life. And some of my values are I want to be a person that doesn't talk, talk bad about people. I want to be a person that praises people because me, man, before I was like the biggest person to criticize, I would always be making fun of people bagging on people and I was really bad at that and that's something that I wanted to change I wanted to be seen as a person that encourages people not a person that criticizes people because I could see that people were dodging me they were like oh here comes Andres you know it's probably gonna criticize <laughs> don't tell Andres because you know he'll start saying that you're fat or you're ugly or this and that so um <clears throat> so I think that's what the comedy you know I, I watched too much comedy I think that it got to the point where I was like trying to be Mr. Comedy at all times but um 
what helped me, I was like, I, I, I want to be a person who uh, is an instrument in the hands of God. I want to be a person who is helping my community. I want to be a person that makes family a priority. I want to be a person that I don't, I don't drink to get drunk. That's something that I had to put, man, because I was a dr- like, I would get drunk. I would drink a 30 pack in the night. Do oh, like eight ball, you know what I mean? Just do like an eight ball of Coke. You know what I mean? Just, I was, wow. I was out of control, man. I was out of control and I had to change. And once I wrote, wrote my values, man, it's funny because when I, when I started seeing those values, I started attracting the people. I hope we lost your volume again. Hello? I, 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 somebody was calling me right there. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, so when, when I started, uh, like, these values that I wanted to live by, I wasn't living by other people's values. That's what happens in life, man. A lot of people, they start living by other people's values and not yes. by their own values. So right. we got to take that first step. And there's a book, um, if, uh, I don't know, in Nasha, I think you said, um, if you want, she can send me a message, and then I can send her. Um, I can't remember what the book is called, but it's called. Um, I can't remember, but I and I even have the book, but it's like the eight principles, and it starts off with, what values do you want to live by? What values do you want to li- like? Who do you want to be? Many people don't even know who they are, and that's why they can't even love themselves because they don't know who they are. How are you gonna love yourself when you don't even know who you are? And then you try to you get into relationships with people that are broken, just like you. And then, and I'm not saying anybody in particular, but just, you know, like me, you know, like, or, or anybody, you get into relationships with people that are broken, two broken people can't, can't fix anything. So you got to have self love. And then you start finding people that have self love, because when you have the values that you want to live by, and you're living by those values, people see it in you. And they say, wow, this person loves themselves. This person is different. This person is so positive. I want to be around this person. And Right now, I'm attracting. Man, I attracted you. Look at you. I'm talking to you, man. I don't even. I don't. I've never even met you. This is the first yep. time I met you. But I already like you because you. I, I. I don't know, man. The way that you talk, the way that you speak. I know you have a great mindset. You know Steve, so I definitely know you're a great man. And <laughs> I love I'm it. Serious, man. It's the truth. It's the truth. I. I feel you, man. Like I, I see. I feel your energy. You have amazing energy, man. And. It doesn't even matter how old you are, man. I know 20, 30 year olds that have the the worst energy in the world. And it's a lot of people have to do with the environment. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think values define who you want to be and write it down. This is another thing that people don't do. They don't write it down. You got to mm-hmm. write it down and look at it every single day. Law of attraction. You have to attract what you want, but write it down. Write it down every single and look at it every single day for the first couple of years. And then later on, maybe just every week, every week I look at it and I have it on my vision board, man. Every time I wake up, I see it. That's the man I want to be. Mm-hmm. I don't want to deviate and go back to who I used to be, because if I go back to who I used to be, I'm going to be miserable and I don't want to be miserable. I'm a happy guy. Very good. Yeah, I like that. Hey, I wanted to, to share something with you and because uh, I, I totally yeah. understand what you were saying about you know, how people can be broken and so forth. But I also wanted to point out, actually, nobody is ever really broken. What we have are people who keep making the same choices that they don't like the result of over and over again. But they're not really broken. Yeah. I just wanted to point that yeah. out. Yeah, no, no, good good point. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's a, that's a better way of putting it, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you're right, man. We keep making the same decisions. Uh, like Wayne Dyer says, uh, a, a woman, she's walking down the street, and she falls into a, uh, she sees a hole, and she falls into the hole. The next week, she walks down the same street, she sees the hole, and she still falls into that hole some way, somehow. And <laughs> next week, she comes, and then she's going to like towards the hole, but she goes around the hole. The following week, she decides to just take a different street. Yeah, there it is. It's Very just, simple. Yeah, very simple. So this, yeah, but this this actually ties into the intro that Steve gave me uh, to talk about who you were because that intro had a very interesting little phrase in it, and I, I want to ask about that phrase. The the one sentence I'm referring to says, "As a life coach, Andres helps his clients overcome the five fears that are holding back many people from living their full potential." What are the five fears? Okay, so the five fears. First one we talked about was, uh, and there's really no particular order, but. Uh, the one that we had talked about was failure, fear of failure, fear of failing. Uh, I come across this many times. Uh, 
People are scared to fail because they failed in the past. Maybe they didn't pass the bar exam. Uh, right now I'm currently co coaching a lawyer um, and uh, she is scared of failing if she tries to go to be a life coach because her family says, you want to be a life coach? What a joke. Come on. <laughs> You're a lawyer. We're lawyers. Our families are lawyers. We don't have, we're not life coaches. That's stupid. Oh, she's so, got the legal tradition. Yes, the tradition. Yep. Yeah. So that was the first one. And then um, the fear of rejection, which is kind of like uh -huh. the same as failure, I guess, in a way. But the fear of getting rejected, you know, like uh, if, if they uh, maybe go for something and then they're rejected, then they're going to feel like, oh, man, then this was not for me. Uh, the next one is the fear of stepping out of their comfort zone. Oh, yes. Uh, many of us, we, we stay in our comfort zone. We don't want to try something different because it's too scary. It's the unknown. And, uh, and then it's, uh, the next one is fear of caring about what people say about us. Oh, that's a, mm -hmm. that one right there is huge, mm -hmm. huge. I come across that one a lot, a lot. And then the last one is fear of not feeling worthy. Who would listen to me? Who mm -hmm. am I to do this type of work? I'm like, why not? You have a great story. You have amazing experience. You've done a lot of great things in your life. Why wouldn't you be worthy? And then they get into their heads. And like Tony Robbins says, you get in your head and you're dead. So <laughs> you, you got you to follow that heart, man. It's the heart. The heart is where the truth is, is at, man. But we get into our heads. And before you know it, that's why I talk a lot about, like, in my workshops, I talk about self-talk. I talk about thought. The power of your word, man. Your word mm -hmm. turns into a thought, creates a feeling, an action, and then a result. And then you get a really bad result, which leads to another bad thought. And it's just a vicious cycle of just negativity that you're living on a daily basis. And this is why we are depressed. This is why we're feeling anxious. We're looking at social media, comparing ourselves to everybody. Oh, my God, like, I don't have this iPhone. I don't have uh, – I'm not going on vacation like those people. I don't have this materialistic thing. I'm not worthy of this because – the people who are worthy of it, they're doing great things, and I'm not. I'm not amazing. Like, we judge ourselves more than other people judge us. That's true. That's very true. Okay, now I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Um, first okay. of all, are you familiar with the teachings of Abraham Hicks? Uh, somewhat, yeah. I've heard some of her, of her, of her okay. talks. All right, so you have some familiarity, so that's good. Um, Abraham, one of the things that Abraham likes to talk about is the two-ended stick. Um, the two-ended stick is where... Uh, you want to have, say, I don't know, you want to have a, a better career, but what you tend to focus on is the fact that you lack a better career. It's the two ends of the stick are the thing and the lack end of the thing. And, and in fact, most of, that, that's actually what the true opposites are in the world. We think of like uh, uh, life and death or, or love and hate being opposites, but it's really love and lack of love that are the opposites. That's one of their main points mm -hmm. that they make. So with that concept in mind, I always like to try to take any time that we're talking about negatives, I like to try to ask myself, okay, so what that the negative is the lack end. What's the what's the what's the thing end? What's the positive end of the stick? So if if here's where I'm putting you on the spot. If you take your five fears, what's the flip side of those fears? What's the what's the positive end of those fears? Okay. So well with with the fear of of, of being rejected, uh yep. I cause I used to do door to door to door sales before. And I I've was selling like uh yeah. Oh, dude, that was that was that was uh that was tough. It gave me a lot of tough skin. Like it gave me thick skin. Being rejected has given me so much thick skin. Uh, sometimes I'll send a hundred emails to different schools and I'll get like two, three replies. And now I'm I celebrate, man. I celebrate the rejections. Like yes, I got a no, baby. You, yeah. <laughs> I got to be enthusiastic about it. And even like when I get a no with my coachings, I'm like you. Yeah. They didn't take me as their coach. Yes, mm. I celebrate them. And I really, no matter what happens, man, I don't lose enthusiasm. Because once I lose my enthusiasm, my energy goes down and people can feel it. People can see it. And they say, this guy, something's wrong. He's not going to give me energy. He wants to be my coach and look at his energy. His energy is lower than mine. He's not going to be able to coach me. So with the, with the failures, um, that we got to look at it as a learning experience. Never look at it. At a, at a, uh, I'll give you an example. I started a nonprofit. And then I said, oh, my God, like, I don't want to do a nonprofit. After I dealt with, like, probably anxiety for, like, two months just <laughs> thinking about it. This was just recent, man. 
because I just I wanted to do nonprofit so I could just kind of like prove myself that I could do bigger things and all this stuff. But really, I wasn't doing it for myself because I wanted to. I just wanted to prove myself. I don't know why, but I ended up saying, you know what? I'm not gonna do it. I lost 300 bucks, but it was a uh, it was a good experience. You know, I uh, I lo- I may have lost 300 bucks, but it was it was good that I did that. I failed, but I learned from it that never again will I follow in trying to prove myself to other people and doing something that I truly don't want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. So that's like with the, with the failure, just learn from your failures, man. Um, the other let's one, go, stepping out of the- let's go to the one about uh, what other people say. Cause say you were asked a question. She says, I've lived in a culture where it's always been about what others will say. So how do I shift this paradigm? Okay. So that goes back kind of like to the values, like who do you want to be? And, what do you want to do? And then at the same time, sometimes we have to set some boundaries with these people who are always talking a lot of negative things. We got to say, you know what? I really don't like, you know, the way that you're talking to me this way, being respectful about it. If they don't respect that, that means that maybe you've got to get rid of them or you got to kind of distance yourself because sometimes it could be family. So maybe you could just send a text message. Hey, how you doing on or brother or whatever? Oh, everything's great. Wonderful. All right. Uh, maybe I'll see you at the barbecue. Maybe I won't. Whatever. <laughs> but sometimes you got to distance yourself, man, because these people can be. It's like it's like it's like a, if a, a stranger comes to you, to you and in your coffee he pours sugar, you're not gonna die. But if a relative comes over and pours venom in your coffee, then you'll die. You know, you really gotta watch out who's putting your either the sugar or the venom in your coffee, man, and. A lot of the times we have people put seeds in our mind that can be destructing for ourselves. And then we end up saying, you know what? They're right. I, I can't do this. And then we give up because of other people's opinions. So we really got to set boundaries with these people. And if they don't respect that, maybe we got to get rid of them and keep it real because you only live one life, man. Even if it's your family, your friends, you are you don't want to live a life of regret because of one person, one negative person. No one negative fruit can spoil the whole batch, man. And you got to really be conscious of your environment because your environment will either make you or break you, man. It's very true. Yeah, that's the way it, that'll tend to work out if you don't if you don't take control of the situation. I I actually you talked earlier about how you um, had dealt with the uh, major drug issues and weight issues and so forth. When I was in my t- early twenties, I was very much into uh, the drug and alcohol scene. And I actually just reached a point where I said, I don't like living this way anymore. I don't like the way it feels. Yeah. But I also knew that I couldn't just quit, say I'm gonna quit doing the drugs and keep everything else the same because most of my friends were partiers. It wasn't gonna work, you know? So I uh-huh. literally mm-hmm. had to, the way yeah. I thought of it in my mind, I didn't say it this way to them, but the way I thought it in my mind was, I had to fire my friends. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I had to man. fire them, hey. say, sorry, you're out of my life, you're gone. History, sayonara, yeah. goodbye. <laughs> yes, yeah, and and to this day, you still see people that are 40, 50 years old. I still, you know, sometimes I would go to get-togethers, and I see these 40, 50-year-old men still doing cocaine, and mm. they're kind of like, hey, what's up, man? You want to do something? I'm like, no, I'm good, man. Thank you, whatever. Um, and But, you know, like, I'm like, okay, you know what? It, it's crazy, man, how that could have been me. I could have yeah. been... You know, in this 30, I'm 35 right now. What if I would have still been doing the same thing? I could have probably maybe gone up to my 40, 50, 60 years old and still be doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. And you're right, man. Sometimes you've got to fire your friends. I mean, I still keep in contact with some of them, but like we don't hang out or anything because we are, we are into different things and it's cool, man. I, I, I respect that, you know? Sorry, my, my video went off. I got to turn it back on. It'll be back in a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I, I thought. So no one's sending videos. What happened? No, no, I, I can hear you just fine. I just hit the wrong key. That's all. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Now, Preston published or uh, posted a, a comment here, and uh, I, I think he's touching on some of the stuff we're talking about here, so I wanted to run it by you, see what you think. Okay. He says, it comes down to love and gratitude of self and going within with meditation, because when you meditate, It focuses you on the now. And if you go within Mm. and start increasing your love of yourself and gratitude for what you have, then what the external holds doesn't phase you, regardless of what people say, think, or do, or what your ego mind says, because you know you're in control. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's that's great, man. Yeah, 
That's uh, that that's really good stuff. Meditation, yeah. Uh, I practice meditation every single day. I uh, I keep a gratitude journal in my back pocket at all times, and I always write what I'm grateful for, man. Always writing what I'm grateful for, and uh, it could be the littlest things. My son giving me a kiss on the cheek and saying, "Dad, I love you." I'll write it oh. down on my gratitude journal. <laughs> things like that. Yeah, meditation, man, is is very powerful. I agree. Yeah, so that was great, great comment, man. Appreciate it. Very, very good. So let's see. Let's go at some of the other uh, failures that, or not failures, the other uh, fears that we haven't uh, reversed yet. What else can we reverse? Uh, feeling, uh, the feeling of not feeling worthy. Uh, yeah. There's there's something that uh, that is called cognitive reframing. Reframe that thought. Change it. If you say, you know, I'm not good enough, say, I am good enough, and just mm-hmm. keep saying it over and over again. And it's like that law of attraction. Uh, that you, the more you say it, the more you start to believe it. Um, mm-hmm. I keep, I keep myself like affirmations every single day. I, I tell myself affirmations, you know, like even, even when I'm about to go give a speech, I look at my bracelet. It's right here. It says, I believe in myself. I carry this at all times and I do believe in myself and I believe in my abilities. And whenever I'm having like a down moment, I, I talk to myself and say, you know, I am worthy of this. What, what am I saying? What today, when I was going to give the speech at, uh, at my son's, at my son's school, I was actually thinking about not doing it for a reason. Like I was thinking, man, what if I uh, make a fool out of myself and then make my son look, you know, embarrass him. And then I, uh, I watched, uh, it was so funny because I was looking through YouTube and I saw a video by Fred Rogers and it was a speech by Fred Rogers. And he says how we have to be kind to people. We have to, through TV, we have to provide service that will change people's lives. And I said, man, why am I thinking about my fears? Like I'm only thinking about myself. I gotta mm-hmm. be thinking about my son and the people that are around him. And I said, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna do great. And it was it went great, man. It was 20 minutes and the kids were really engaged. They were yelling, I believe in myself, I love myself. You can check it out on, on, on Facebook Live if you want to see it, but it, it was amazing. Very it good. was cool. So very good. Yeah. yeah you mentioned Fred talking, Rogers man. too. Fred Rogers is fabulous. Have you seen the oh, uh, the dude. biopic that was done on him a few years ago? No, I want to watch the documentary, right? You're saying? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I want to watch that. Did you watch it? It's great. It's excellent. Uh, yeah. I want to watch a lot it. of yeah, old footage, a lot of old film footage of him uh, going back to the very earliest days of, of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and so forth. Just really cool. Yeah, incredible, it also man. Included, he, he... It, it also included the, uh, um, the, the talk that he gave to Congress about funding uh, for PBS back in the 1960s mm. when they were thinking of cutting it. And and the speech that he made, have you heard about that? He made this one speech at that time that basically earned PBS the entire endowment that they were looking for from Congress. Wow. Yeah, really yeah, something. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna watch it for sure, man, because yeah, Fred Rogers, yeah, he was a, a true inspiration, man, to, to many people, to the whole world. He, he had an amazing ability and understanding of the need of kids for validation. And that's what you're talking about here, that you've been talking about that quite a bit. The need for validation, the need for feeling good about themselves. That that that's yes. one of the most important things that there is, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Um, kids, they're really. Uh, I, I come across this a lot that they're more worried about what others say about them, which is something that it's not even kids; it's just adults too. But uh, they're always trying. They always they always tell me, man, I'm always thinking like, what is what are people thinking about me? Like I always want to know what these kids like, what my friends or people are thinking about me, like. I come across that a lot. They're always telling me, I always wonder what people are thinking about me. I'm always worried about what people are thinking about me. Mm. But that's a huge yeah. one right there. It is, it's very big, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Nasha uh, had another comment, she says, I live in a culture where they judge everything, but I no longer care because I do believe in myself. And that's a big comment Beautiful. right there from Nasha. Nasha has been yeah. working on this for a long time now. She's she's a long time listener of the podcast and has been she, she's asked a lot of people for help. A lot of co-hosts have gotten involved and so forth, and she's been working on this. So to see her say, "Beautiful," I no longer care about that because I do believe in myself. That's a big thing for her. Love it. I love it. I love it. You know, and Nasha, if you ever have any questions, feel uh, feel free to reach out to me and be more than happy to help you with whatever I can. Uh, I'm here to support you. I'm here to support anybody that is on here. Uh, you know, I love helping people, man. That's my purpose. My purpose in life is to help save lives and to save lives by just simply giving them some some confidence in themselves 
some some inspiration, just some of my words to to bring them happiness brings me happiness. Mm, yeah, that's good stuff. No doubt about that. Hey, uh, I got a question here, and then I also have a comment from Steve who poked his head in. But before I get to Steve, oh, cool. I want to read the question. The question is from Saira. She says, Andres, is it better to write affirmations or to say them in the head daily? Okay, perfect. Uh, actually, both. Write them out and say them daily. And then, and then you know, sometimes what, what I do is uh, I keep them in my bathroom. I keep them, like, you know, in my car. I actually have a card right here, you know, affirmation card right here. Boom, right there. Um, you know, you got to keep them everywhere. Keep them everywhere. Even if people think that you're, like, going crazy or anything like that. You know what, man? I'm going crazy to love myself. That's what you're doing. Mm. Yeah. Very good. That's good stuff. And then Steve also has a question for you. Um, and Steve, cool. feel free to jump on the platform. He, he says he's managed to get a little time. You know, even if you spend five minutes, Steve, we'd love to have you. You know, this is your show too. Oh, this yeah, is your yeah, time, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. he says, I've managed Steve. to get a little time. A question for Andres. How important is it to make young people aware that they are actually in, in control of their own thoughts and ultimately their own feelings? And how do you go about this? It's so important to get them oh. out of the people-pleasing mindset, he says. Yes. You know what it is, man? It's repetition. And repetition of us telling them that they can do whatever they want, that they can change their thoughts. Um, when I've worked with foster kids, I, I, ta I teach them about, like, the t tools, man. We got to give them these tools, like, tools of, like, uh, self-awareness, the tools of uh, cognitive reframing. You can change your thought immediately. And you know what's cool about kids, man, is that they are more willing to learn than adults. Some adults, like, we are so trained for so many years, man, that it's sometimes really hard to like get away from that. But as a oh, kid, yeah. if you teach him this tool very early, they will never forget. Like my son, I mean, he's six years old. He's like, hey, if you say so, you're, if you tell yourself that you can and you can't, then you're right. Like the kid is learning, man. And and uh, mm -hmm. these kids, we can teach them so much with just the littlest like self awareness. Like, is your thought is it true? Somebody called you stupid. Are you really stupid? No, you're not. That person just called you a name. You failed the test. Are you dumb? No, you're just lazy. Come on. <laughs> That's me. That was me. <laughs> oh, that's a <laughs> No, you're not dumb. You're just lazy. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Thanks, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, one, that one caught me on the funny button. <laughs> nice. That's very good. But uh, yes, I, I agree with you. Um, in fact, uh, Steve's question is a really good question because it is, uh, in fact, I wouldn't even expand the question now that I think about it. His question is how is important is it to make young people aware? But like you said, it's, young people are the ones who are able to make the change quickest. I mean, you called yes. it, uh, what do you call it, cognitive, what, what's the term you use to describe cognitive it? Cognitive reframing. Reframing, uh, yeah. Reframing the thought, yeah. yeah. Basically the same idea of what Abraham Hicks calls pivoting, the same concept. Taking, taking yeah. You know, yeah. the negative way of thinking of it and turning it into a positive way of looking at it. So, it, yeah. Yes, it absolutely, like absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. it also occurs to me that, like you said, kids are really very quick at being able to do that. Adults have more trouble with it because of all the subconscious programming we've developed over the years, usually pretty yes. negative stuff. It can take longer for us to, to make changes and make shifts. And and so that's why I would, I would also add in, it isn't so much, it, it isn't just about us making the young people aware, it's also paying attention to the, what the young people can make us aware of, because they yes. have, they, they have these incredible insights. I mean, we gave some examples earlier on, you know, stories of you let people, young people just do what they're going to do. And what was the kid, what was the kid did? He he broke through the ice by making circles on it, which of course would baffle. Yeah, just, just with the bread. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if an adult was there, they'd be like, what the hell are you doing? You know? Don't do that. Come That's on. not going to help. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, but if, but you know, like the kid just was doing it, man, and he believed that he was going to some way, somehow do it. And he did it, you know? So Crazy. It was, yeah. Yeah, but but it shows just that there are these amazing ways that kids can teach us stuff that is almost mind-boggling to adults. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah, requires yeah. actually letting us put our own egos aside in order to learn from it because, you know, we're used to the idea that, oh, the adults should be teaching the kids, not the other way around. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that's that's, that's true, learning. It's true. 
I, I learned I learn from my kids, man. They they do teach me a lot of great things um, because you got to live your life like a kid, man. Because we're all grown kids, honestly. We really are. We're grown kids. We still have those triggers that somebody says something, you're like, did they just say? <laughs> you know, you're like, did you just hear what she said about me? Mm -hmm. I, I Look, I know she's talking about me. She's not. I know she's over there, but I know she's talking about me. I bet you. You know, like, you know, that's. It's uh, it's yeah, it's interesting. We're good at it. <laughs> it's always good to have a skill. That's just not one. Yeah, of oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's fun. Um, we got about uh, nine you, minutes. So I'm, I'm looking to see if there are any other questions. I don't really see any of the questions from the audience. So I'm just going to go back to some of my own questions. Um, so okay, we've explored. Let's see. Have we covered all of? All five with uh, positive alternatives. We've done fear of rejection. Oh, I think in the com comfort zone. I don't know if we. Well, comfort zone. We, we didn't do that. that. You're right. So, so talk about that. Yeah. How, how do you? How do we reframe that one? That one, uh, you got to do what's uncomfortable, man. You you must do what's step into something. Do something different. Like if you're used to just working and then just going home and watching TV, watching some hoops. Do something different, you know, change it up and say, you know what, man, I'm going to go to a Toastmasters meeting. I'm going to go to uh, a, mind, a, a mastermind group in Facebook. I'm just going to join new people, whatever it is. I see Steve there. Join, join, join hey. masterminds like Steve. Hey, there he is. Hey, Steve. How you so doing? I, 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 I jump on. I've, I've got a spare five minutes. So, uh, yeah, well, we got on. about seven left, so that works. You know? <laughs> nice. I'm still, half, I'm still halfway through eating um, a burger, so. <laughs> well, as long as you don't chew in my right. face, I'm okay with that, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've been, I've been listening in. It's, it's awesome because I think that the stuff that you're talking about with, with kids is, is brilliant because if you actually think about it from a logical point of view, when you've got children, they haven't got the subconscious programs that we've right. developed over, over a period of years. So, for, if you look at like two and three year olds, anything's possible for them. They don't have any fear around anything. They're quite happy to go off and do awesome different things and, and, and jump into anything. Whereas when we get to sort of 15, 16 and onwards, we've already got subconscious programs that our parents have put in place, schools put in place about what's possible and what isn't. And that's learned, but we can unlearn all that stuff. And I think that's what, 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 what I've got from this podcast today that you've both been talking about is that you, you can unlearn what you learn as um, as a child and through your early adult years if you decide to make different choices. That's that's mm -hmm. what it's about. Yes. Yeah, yeah no, it, it's true, man. And you know what? But you got to do the work. That's the thing. People don't do the work. I journal every single day. I work on my, on my meditation every day. I work out every day. Um, I take a cold shower. I've been taking a cold shower for a year and a half now. And... Man, that no, I cold shower. I take a warm shower. Cold showers, man. But not cold showers. <laughs> not cold showers. <laughs> yeah, cold showers are life changing, man. I, I honestly, it, you read yeah. into it, it actually is good for like, uh, like uh, it's good for depression. It's good for a lot of things, man. It's good for your skin, for your hair, whatever. A lot of there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, it's a little bit crazy. Tony Robbins does it. That's why I went, I, I said, you know what, I'm going to take a shower every cold shower. And I've been doing it for a year and a half, and I feel amazing. I so suppose to he, Tony Robbins actually takes the cold shower because he's walked on the hot coals. He has to offset it, you see. <laughs> <laughs> it, do, it does make sense in a way, because if you think about it, the, the, the cold shower is going to bring you into the present moment, I suppose, because you've got that shock of the cold, and that, that's got to bring yes. you... I'll bring you to the now, and you're in the present moment. So yeah. I suppose then, then you, you're not worrying about the future. You're not thinking about pa the past. So you, you're in a place where you can create whatever you want moving forward. Then, so that makes sense. Yeah, and and then and you know the first time, I guarantee you, you'll yell like a little girl. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was yelling. I said, "Ah, oh, yalla!" Oh. Like, what is this? Yeah, you'll yell. Trust me. I, I, actually, I don't yell. I just turn back to warm again. <laughs> can I, can I challenge you, the both of you? Can I, can I challenge the both of you? 
You can try. Okay. <laughs> I want to I want to challenge you guys to take a cold bath for 3 days straight. Guys, uh, it's a bath now. <laughs> it's gone from a shower to a bath. <laughs> oh, bath. Oh, no, no, no. A cold shower, 3 days. <laughs> straight. That's it. So so I have to spend all day in the shower? Wow. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Just when you wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just you just being silly now, Walt. Well. That, 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 that's just my way of deflecting. Like, no, no way I'm going to take a cold shower for three days. It's just not happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, well, a cold shower in the morning. All right. <laughs> I might try it. I'll I'll have a I'll have a think okay. about that. But I might I might, I might give it. Let, 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 me, let me know. Let me know. I, I do agree yeah, that the people in the yeah, the I, I, I do agree with the, the concept comments. of of, um, of changing the uh, perspective when it comes to being in a comfort zone because that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about getting out of yeah. the comfort zone, and there there are a lot of ways to look at it. One of the ways I like to look at getting out of comfort zones is first of all to recognize that Steve and I, you 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 and I have talked about this quite a bit. Comfort zones are very uncomfortable. And when I recognize and realize just how uncomfortable a comfort zone is, I don't really want to stay there very long. I don't need to take a cold shower to come to that conclusion. Like, I want to get out of that comfort zone quickly, <laughs> as fast as yeah. possible. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so so that for me is like the, the biggest one. The second thing, too, that I like to think about with a comfort zone is that when you're leaving what is called a comfort zone, what you're really going into is an excitement zone. So I like to mm -hmm. think of the outside area as an excitement area. That to me is that's, much more of a, I like the carrot rather than the stick approach. That's that's what it should be like. Um, but for the majority of people, coming out of the comfort zone creates fear until you do that often enough that your, sub, that your subconscious mind then realizes that actually once I've done that, I get a result that's actually better than where I was. Mm. And now... You, now I actively go and look for things that push me outside of my comfort zone on purpose. I look mm. for those things on purpose. Whereas before, um, before I started all this work, years, what, six, six, seven years ago, I'd be the quiet person who'd hide in the corner and not get involved in anything because I didn't want to go out of my comfort zone because that felt safer. But actually, once, once you start doing it, and it's a gradual thing, yes, at, at first it's scary, um, but it's a gradual thing. Once you start doing that and you push yourself a little bit, then next time yeah. you want to go a little bit further and a little bit further. It's this micro-shifting thing that we've talked about before right. as well. Um, right. Gradually helping the subconscious mind to um, to create a new way of being in a nice, easy, step-by-step -step way. So it's not too much. It's not too much for it to handle so that it... It just freaks out and runs away and hides in a corner. No, we're going to do a little bit at a time, and then eventually we get a massive change out of that. And that's 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 what this stuff's all about. It's so it's so simple, yet so difficult for people to um, to work with unless they've got somebody to facilitate that for them and with them. Because okay. I can't do it on myself at times. I have to get somebody else outside of me to help me to facilitate that in myself because my subconscious doesn't want to do it. And it will stay where it is if it can because that's its job. Its job is to keep us in that comfort zone and keep us safe. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, like you said, you need somebody to work with. So I just want to let everybody know, all the listeners know that if any of you are interested in a free, powerful coaching session with myself, please send me an email to contact at I believe in myself org. You can look me up on Facebook, Andres Ruiz, send me a message, a message and we'll set up a session and uh, it'll be powerful. I'll help you with your strategy to make sure you accomplish that vision and get past that fear that is stopping you from unleashing your greatness. Beautiful. Absolutely. I love it. Wonderful. And I would recommend contacting Andres because he's actually helped me with my public speaking side of things. He's, he's fantastic because he's already got a lot of experience in public speaking and um, and, and he's given me some really good tools. So if, you, if you're wanting to, to learn more about that, I'd definitely give him, you know, give him a shout. Excellent. Thanks, man. All right. Well, Andres, thank you for joining us and sharing these wonderful piece, pieces of wisdom with us. This has been fabulous. I've been enjoying getting to know you. We'll have to arrange to have you come back sometime, maybe sometime when 
Steve and I are doing the show. If Steve's here for the full show, we can do a, a threesome for the whole thing. How's that sound? Absolutely, man. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, well, then we'll figure out the time. We'll have you back to do that. Thank you also to our live stream listeners and to our regular podcast listeners, of course, because you're the ones that we do all this for. And uh, with that thought in mind, Steve, also thanks for dropping in. We appreciate that. And we'll, we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.